everyone welcome to this lecture uh, in this lecture we're continuing on the series of talking about Allen open studio for data integration if you're joining us for the very first time uh, as you can see this is 1.11 so we have uh, 10 videos ahead of this that we've you know covered certain concepts within having data integration uh, with the open studio version uh, that allows you to uh, better understand the tool uh, so that you can use it for your data integration need or if you're just looking to go ahead and take the talent certification exam uh, hopefully some of the concepts that are covered in, uh, in this series will help you prepare for that exam uh, with big confidence now there are certain differences between open studio as i've echoed uh, throughout uh, versus the enterprise version but either way uh, the fundamental skills are still uh, relevant uh, even if uh, you want to go on to work with the enterprise version the fundamental skills you will get from the open studio are still very powerful uh, now on the screen uh, in this session in this lecture we're going to be talking about documentation and on what it means to uh, document jobs within uh, talent you know if you're like me uh, you go into an organization and i'm sure most of you out there developers have come across this uh, you're given a workflow something that somebody uh, build maybe many many years ago and you open it up and you have no idea what this person was doing uh, because one it's very complex and two you cannot read it you have no idea what it's doing you just see everything plastered on the canvas and three there's no information written anywhere that tells you what exactly uh, the individual was trying to do you now that can be very painful and expensive uh, for companies to to maintain over time and so as a good developer, uh, you want to develop the habit of uh, building workflows that are readable and that are manageable, not just for yourself, because you, sometimes you're going to have to come back and maintain those workflows, but for your colleagues too, as well, right? So this uh, lecture is really going to talk about documentation, showing how we can do uh, that within Talent Open Studio, and uh, giving you a little bit of uh, tips and tricks uh, along the way. So. As always, we're going to switch over into studio. And if I can switch over here, just bear with me. So we switch over to the studio environment. And we, here we're going to be talking about documentation. I already have on my screen uh, a workflow called documentation. We're going to close that workflow. I have it sitting out here. And I'm going to move that into the documentation folder just so that everything is readable. That's one part of documentation, right? And then did that on purpose. If you notice, I had it outside, everything is just all over the place. What I'm doing here is I'm having different folders for different things that I'm working on. It's as easy as creating a folder here to segment your workflow. Uh, trust me, it helps with readability. So if somebody came into my uh, project, this is just my local project, but just imagine somebody came in here. They can quickly see what each, uh, they can know where to go look for a job. So they know if you're looking for joins, you can go in here. You're looking for metadata, you can go in here. Context variables, you can go in there. And that goes a long way towards helping uh, with readability for your job. So I uh, highly encourage something that you should uh, try and definitely keep at the back of your mind. Now, uh, in addition to that, let's go into that particular job. It's a very simple job. I kept it really basic. Uh, this is something that we did in the previous lecture, getting some, uh, well, what exactly am I doing? Can you tell me before I uh, start spilling it out, right? Looking at this job, you have no idea, right? It looks like there's something here, there's some map here, and uh, it's put into a row. There is nothing telling me what exactly this job is doing at a glance, unless you start clicking in to uh, in the component to actually see what's going on. But as part of documentation, we can actually start annotating the flow so that if somebody looks at it from from uh, from a high level point of view, they can have an idea of what is going on. This is not necessarily a technical skill, but it's something. It's a soft skill. I, I would call it a soft skill if, if, if it falls into that category. But it's a skill that you want to have to really differentiate yourself from the amateurs, right? A, a professional. So not just get the job done, but do it in a way that actually makes sense. Just imagine somebody sends you. Uh, some appliance to your home and you open up the appliance and there's no manual on how to operate that it's really difficult and could get really annoying so understanding how to do documentation is key one way and the easy way to do that is uh, to go under miscellaneous 
and Talon just offered this uh, thing of a note. So you can always bring a note in there and add a uh, note to what you're doing. So let me uh, bring that in there. I can say getting customer file, right? Just something as easy uh, like that. You don't have to really get too complicated. We're not trying to write the book here for, for, to be published, right? Just something that somebody can read and get an idea, right? And you know, the, the, the tip that I always say is, if you have doubt about what you did, just document it, right? Because two years from now, or two months from now, or one year from now, you're gonna look at that flow and have no idea what you're doing. So in here, I would say, um, you know, adding your some customer data by custom function, because that's what we did. We were calling the customer function to add the URL to the customer data. So I'll just keep this very simple, but you can get the point. At a glance, you can see what this job was doing so that you don't have to open up this job and read it each time before you get an idea of what's going on. And that's really what documentation is about, right? One of the other things that you can do in addition to just putting notes uh, on the screen is you can actually change the names of the component. And the way you do that, and this is key, this is very key, pay attention to this really closely. Uh, you select the component itself, right? You go down to view, and you have the ability to change the label format. So, but you're, uh, that's a little bit of body, but you get the point. So you can change all of those. So in this case, instead of just leaving components with a generic name that comes with it, you want to actually go in, you can click on the component, go down to the view, and change the label format for that component, or you can just it's kind of like a soft click two times, one time depending on how soft your click is. And you can uh, give it some description so that on, on uh, at a high level, I can see, well, I have my customer data, customer label, I'm a customer function for URL, I'm calling a function, and I'm viewing the data on the screen, right? I can get all of this information without not necessarily having to open each company. So that's really what documentation is about. Uh, it's very powerful. It really helps a lot from a software development life cycle. Another thing that we can we can do from a job, as I mentioned, is you know making sure your versions are, are right. You're putting in the right uh, descriptions uh, to jobs each time you create them. Very very important. I didn't show that when I created it, but let's say I was creating a new job here. You know what talent always ask is give the name, give the purpose, give the description. You know, when you're in the mood and you're just cracking out jobs, it's very tempting to ignore all of these things. But believe me, if uh, your development lead is really uh, serious about what they're doing, they will ask you to put this information. And they should be asking you to put that information. Just because when you come back to the flow, it's going to make everybody's life a lot easier. Right? So part of documentation within talent. Now, another thing that, uh, as part of documentation, I'm gonna show one thing here. We talked about versions. You just select a particular component. So I go back to the component itself. I can see documentation. You can add more detailed notes about that component here, right? Reading from apart from the local drive to load to the data warehouse. Just something that you can come back and understand, right? You can decide to show that information here, and this little icon will show up on your job. Uh, just bear with me, my screen doesn't seem to be cooperating today. But ideally, uh, if everything worked the way it should, it doesn't seem to be cooperating with me today. Once you add those uh, documentations to your flow, you can over over this a little bit. And you should be able to see that. I mean, I'm not sure why I'm not seeing it today. Hopefully, you can see it on your screen as well. So that's one way we can do our documentation in addition to the views we talked about here. Now, another thing that we can do as part of documentation is actually exporting uh, the documentation itself. So Talent can uh, auto-generate a documentation document, which you can export. You can send to your boss to it so they can see what the job is doing without them having to sit over your shoulder so you can show them your screen, right? You can just generate a PDF or an HTML document that you can send to them. And the way we do that, 
what I'm going to show you here for Open Studio is just a fraction of what you can get from the enterprise version. So I'll show you what Open Studio have, but just have at the back of your mind for those of you that are using the enterprise version that you might see things uh, a little bit differently just because enterprise has more more capabilities. So for Open Studio, uh, this is the job that we're working with. Let me go ahead and close it. We've seen how we can add documentation to that job. Let's right click on this uh, job. Now you can see generate uh, documentation, right? And what this allows us to do is to generate documentation about the job that we're working with. And if you had some formatting, you can put in the formatting, right? And this documentation that we're generating is going to be, let me cancel this and do it slowly again. So right click, generate doc as HTML. You can see this as HTML, right? So if you do that, uh, it's going to save to this path. Documentation is finished. I don't have a custom CSS, but if you did have that, you can always apply that to your flow. So if you go back in here, the job name is documentation. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and uh, extract that in here. And if you go into that job, you can see the HTML file that has been, docu that has been documented, uh, generated for us here. This is something that you can put in a shared location. Uh, you can open this up, uh, send it to your boss. Uh, it, it captures the pertinent information along with screenshots about what your job is doing. And this is where you really see how what we wrote on the screen is coming in handy uh, because visually you can understand what the flow is doing. So very key and all the components that I use are being uh, talked about in there. Um, and you can just get very rich and robust uh, details about uh, the, the job that you've uh, built. My transformations, you can see the screenshots are also pulled as well. Uh, just very powerful uh, things that you can have at your disposal uh, as part of the documentation of the job. Just scroll through one more time so that we can see. Now, last but not least, we've talked about documentation is just readability about your job. And I'm going to talk about this hypothetically at a very high level without showing this. You want to uh, keep your job as simple as possible uh, and typically flow from left to right. So what I can do is I can take this and put this here. Let's say I take this and put this here and I take this and I put here, right? Well, is this doable? Absolutely, right? Am I okay doing it? Sure, right? But does this make any sense and is this easy to read? No. Right, so I don't think anyone needs a rocket scientist or, uh, you know, a training like this or a lecture like this to tell us that uh, this doesn't look good and we shouldn't be doing this, right? And this is just for three components on the screen. Imagine if you have 10, 20 components on the screen and lines are crisscrossing each other. It just makes it very difficult to read uh, and it's not necessarily good documentation. So just have it uh, as a good habit to make sure that your lines on your screen are laid out uh, correctly. Uh, the, the best practice, and each person can develop theirs, is to flow from left to right and top to bottom. That's how humans read, right? If, if I gave you a book, uh, you don't start reading the book. Uh, let's take it this way. Let's try this. If I gave you a book and I gave you this, uh, you don't read the book this way, right? You don't start from the left, from the right, sorry, and see the data coming here and then see the data going there, right? Naturally, uh, we read from left to right and top to bottom. So that's how you want to make uh, uh, your jobs uh, flow. And uh, believe me, that goes a long way uh, to helping to helping with, uh, with readability. Okay. Uh, these are just a few tips. I'm sure there is way more uh, tips around uh, documentation and just readability of code. What I'd be interested to know is, uh, for those of you that are watching, uh, depending on where you're watching this, just leave a comment below. Uh, wherever this video is published uh, to share some of the tips that you've seen in documentation, some of the problems that you've encountered and some of the ways that you've you know, found ways to uh, make the process easy or found something that works really good for you within Talent uh, Open Studio. Uh, I think that will be very helpful for others to see too as well. Because documentation really and making code readable, I don't think it's a, it's a science. It's just an art, right? It's just something that uh, you, you just kind of have a way that you do it that works for you. Uh, and it's really very difficult for someone to preach from above to say this is what you need to do. Of course, there are best practices, but ultimately, uh, you gotta find something that works for you and, and stick with it. And, and if, if it doesn't give you a problem, then stick with what you have. 
But if it's not working for you, definitely be, uh, be feel very comf comfortable changing it to something that, that works, following some of the best practices that we've talked about. All right, so this brings us to the end of this lecture and to the end of this part of, uh, of the lectures. So uh, we've covered a lot of uh, concepts, or all considered basics uh, concepts. And as you can see, the next slide switches to advanced. And in the next series of videos, we're going to be covering some more advanced concepts, uh, just going beyond creating regular jobs, uh, how we can uh, create the jobs, how we can run jobs in parallel, how we can do a lot more exciting things within talent uh, uh, environment. And some of this might be taking us away from Open Studio into more of the enterprise uh, version of the tool. So uh, depending on, on when and how you're watching the videos, you might require, uh, you might need to have uh, the enterprise version uh, of the tool to see some of the capabilities uh, that are available as well. But thank you for, uh, for joining us for this lecture, and we'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.